Apple is all the rage right now. In fact, this is really destination you know, Apple it's, episode. It's a hundred percent because of the liquid <laughs> glass. Yeah. You know? Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness yeah, yeah. we have liquid glass. Right away, yeah. write us your comments about how much you're enjoying liquid glass if you have an iPhone. But before you give your review, you have to go out into the sun and use it and uh, see how good that liquid glass. Well, the worst really part works. is that when people have, I saw some demos because I was just curious, uh, but I, I was, I don't have it at the moment or anything. But when I saw some demos, they were talking about how, what if you have an, uh, an app that has bright sections and dark sections? So the glass is going to switch in between and ha- kind of get confused mm. at random spots because it's trying to like figure out what what the background is based on what kind of glass they show you and that sort of stuff. Like it's an interesting problem that Apple probably knew was going to happen, but they just did it anyway. Cause you know, it's Apple if and you whatever Apple liquid does. Liquid glass is, is stupid. Except- try EOS. EOS is what we recommend on destination Linux. That could be what we said. EOS Marina, if you sponsor us, but until then, <laughs> whatever. What Ryan just said is that, Marina, if you want us to sell out, he's happy to do so. <laughs> no, I would truly, oh. I would mean it, but I'm not going to say it unless you give me money. But, but I mean it now. It but you just oh, te- crap. Like Dang you it. just clipped that. He's got free advertising. <laughs> Dang it. That's why okay. we're poor. So speaking of <laughs> Apple and not being poor, based on some recent developments, Apple has introduced a feature that is pretty interesting and it has a significant impact for Linux people. I know. What? I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's called containerization. I, r- yes, they have Whoa, done containers. They invent that too? <laughs> they, inter- they created this term. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this term. No one's before. ever used containerization. Because, no, no one's yeah. ever used the term container before. But, uh, you know, actually, the funny thing is, Apple probably is going to get credit for this nonsense. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an open source Swift package for Mac OS that enables running Linux containers in lightweight virtual machines. You can think of it, it's kind of like WSL for Microsoft, but for Apple products, which in a way is pretty interesting. And there's some potential there for people like getting people in kind of dabbling into Linux. And you can kind of sort of dabble when you're a Mac user. Does that mean you could finally game on Mac? Of course not. Download Steam? That'd be ridiculous. That'd be ridiculous. Uh, Mac doesn't want that. So there's no way. But actually, I have no idea. I don't know if they're act- if this does anything for that. Who knows? Maybe get some proton. Any of the graphics drivers? You can technically like, game yeah. on Mac just by using Asahi Linux, right? So if you get Fedora Asahi Linux, That's put it true. on. You can just That's game true. on it that way. Yeah, so Asahi Linux, and it also has hardware acceleration in the latest ones and stuff. So you can have like yeah. legit gaming and stuff. Um, so the base thing, in order to use Mac hardware gaming, you just <laughs> use Linux. The Asahi developers are true hackers. Like they're yeah. they are hardcore. That, and Bad also what's to the crazy, bone hackers. You know what's awesome about the Sahi Linux is that if you think about it, React OS, I don't know if you've heard of this, but React OS has been around for a long time. It's about reverse engineering Windows to like have your own OS that's basically Windows and runs Windows stuff, but completely open source and has no connection to Microsoft whatsoever. Uh, that's been around for a very long time and it's been eh, eh, it's been eh for most yeah. of the time. Yeah, and rating. Yeah, between exactly. one to eh, what are you? Rating? <laughs> eh. Well, I mean, actually, or is one it to, ten, to ten? No, one to ten is and it's a meh. And <laughs> so I don't know what meh counts counts as. Maybe like a three or a four, or whatever. Um, so the thing is, is that Asahi Linux is essentially the same thing. It's like a reverse engineering of Mac OS hardware and the firmware and all this sort of. Well, not the firmware, but a lot of the hardware and stuff and the compatibility, but using Linux to do it and. In a very small amount of time, I think React OS has been around for like twenty years, something like that. Yeah, well, it was it was the spiritual success, success, the successor. Successor, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, successor to BOS. Yeah, gotcha. Man, it's so, amazing when I'm correcting uh, the grammar yeah, on this show. That is you know? rare. Ryan yeah. is not typically the one who pronounces things. It's not my thing, coming from the <laughs> south and all. Yeah, but uh, so. <laughs> So this is interesting because Asahi Linux is effectively a reverse engineering of the hardware for the M1, M2, etc. And it's very good. Now, the M3 and M4 are not really they're not usable yet, but the M1 and the M2 are solid. And I've done some testing on the M1, and Ryan, I know you have to switch too. This is like ridiculously good. It is it's shockingly so good. good. Yeah. And it, you it get makes all of the cool parts like of the hardware. You know, 
yeah. on the Mac, along with the the efficiencies of that big little architecture they have, but with Linux on top. And it runs yeah. really good. Like, it's yeah. very cool. So It's so cool. But anyway, we're not talking about that, even oh, though we're not. Asahi Linux is pretty cool. If you have a Mac OS device, if you have a, Mac, a MacBook or whatever, check out Asahi Linux. It's on Destination cool. Linux, also, we recommend Asahi Linux. It's mm-hmm. the distro of choice for us. That's what we, we could be saying. said Asahi. If, <laughs> <laughs> if this open source project that didn't have any kind of backing corporate stuff uh, wanted to p- sponsor yeah. us. Well, they sell shirts and stuff. They could give us some of that profit. Yeah, you know? and also give us some swag too, because you know why not? Yeah, I'd like but, some stuff. <laughs> but seriously, uh, it's very cool, and um, I think that it's it's worth checking out anyway. But if you don't want to do that and you have a MacBook, uh, are you, why are you watching this show? That's really interesting. But uh, there's the um, <laughs> they're learning, Michael. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people uh, we actually have a lot of people who uh, are interested in Linux. And using Destination Linux is like a way to dabble into it. Yeah, so, virtual machines is, is a great which, way to check yes, out. Yeah. Fantastic way to do it. And and just just so you know, I'm just kidding, everybody. If if you use Apple products, it's okay. Just that's also not what make he says sure after the show, but you have to no, be no, that's not, that's a not, premium that's not subscriber that's not to hear what Michael really thinks of you. I'm very tempted to also sell out and say become a patron, but at the same time. That's, that's not what I, that's not what, what I mean by become become a patron to find out what Michael really thinks about. But that's you, not what that's not <laughs> what I think. I I'm actually I'm just telling you what I think already. So no, you, you have to become if you really want to know. <laughs> become a patron. Well, well. For, for the the Mac users, this is actually easier, I think, than using probably VirtualBox or Parallels. Yeah, because it's it's, it's made to be definitely easier than UTM, easy, right, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's funny how this would have really helped me like a week ago. Exactly, you know? I was thinking about been that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe Apple listened to the episode. You think Apple? We know Microsoft listens to the our show. Okay. So one hundred percent, we have somebody at Apple that listens to the show. There's no chance. Yeah. We we're actually growing quite a bit. So that and we know Microsoft. Do you does, think they wrote this in a week? Is it possible? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Apple has a lot of money, but I don't think there's enough money to do that. <laughs> You know, Apple containerization is our favorite containerization here on Destination Linux. That That's could what we would say <laughs> if Apple sponsored us. <laughs> well, oh, the way you can goodness. run Asahi Linux on your on your new uh, M M uh, three or four. <laughs> well, not yet, not yet. The three and four. Is, it's I think not it's in yet, testing. But. I don't think yeah, it's, yeah. Totally it's just like the one and two are the ones that are like the working the best. Yeah, but what's yeah. cool about it is that the way Asahi Linux works is that you still have Mac OS. It's an automatic dual booting. So yeah. you're not going to like Asahi Linux doesn't even try to replace Mac OS. So if you want to play with Linux mm-hmm. and you have one of those, you can dabble and not have to worry about losing Mac OS. It's still going to be there. But anyway, let's talk about the containerization that obviously Apple invented. And at WDBC 2025, the Swift-based open source package for macOS to run Linux container natively uses lightweight VMs and is designed to leverage Apple Silicon virtualization capabilities, optimize performance for the M series chips. Now, it runs a Linux kernel in a small VM, allowing Linux containers to operate seamlessly on macOS, sort of like WSL. It's not like the first WSL; it's more like the second WSL. Yeah, uh, it, each good container, a gooder one. The, the gooder one, uh, 100%. <laughs> Each container runs its own lightweight VM, uh, differing from WSL's like single you know kernel approach, uh, which may have some resource efficiency issues, or maybe not, it depends. But it does also enhance isolation, which is kind of interesting. So you're not going to be wanting to run a bunch of these, but it might come in handy at sometimes if you need to use certain tools that are only available in Linux. And I have used Mac in the past, and uh, it's not... there's There's times where... I've just missed Linux features, you know, just like there's time, yeah. like it, no matter what, like the only time I, like I can't stand using windows. Cause it's always like, as soon as I get off windows, I, I hate it. Uh, I haven't used it in a decade, but Mac, I don't really have a problem with it because it's kind of like cousins, you know, Mac and Linux are kind of like cousins. So there's some like overlap, but every once in a while, the, that it's not Linux rears its ugly head to me. And it's like, just jumps in your yeah. face. Like, Hey, it's not Linux. And you're like, Oh, I wish it was though. Uh, yeah. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, there are some cool things about Apple's hardware 
I will give them credit. The M1 stuff is pretty impressive, uh, but at the same time, it's not Linux. So you can now, if you are an Apple, if you're an Apple user, you can now play with Linux in a container, or of course, a side Linux. Well, this is important yeah. for Apple. Again, they're not doing it for their own purposes, but similar to WSL, you know, when you look at AI, when you look at large language models, when you look at all of this stuff, this is all running on the back of Linux. And if you're going to be, yeah. yeah. And and so having this functionality built in is really a way of keeping people within the ecosystem and also enhancing the capability of Mac OS tenfold. Um, I wonder if they're going to spend as much time as WSL did with Microsoft did with WSL in really making graphical stuff work really well and, you know, optimization, maybe even gaming graphic drivers, those type of things being, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. But either way, I'm glad it's there. I'm glad people have an option to utilize Linux in any capacity uh, in the OS because, you know, I get the temptation to have a MacBook. It's very nice hardware. So um, this just gives people another option. But you should be using Asahi anyway. So there you go. Yeah. But also it's kind of interesting the fact that some people are going to need to use Apple for the fact that their companies give them Apple products and stuff like that. So this is a way to still have Linux stuff. And Mm -hmm. it could also make it easier to do certain things you know how like the audio capture on Mac is incredibly annoying. Oh, maybe it's so bad. Maybe you could use these containers to implement pipe. Or, not probably not, but still, <laughs> it's some, amazing that Apple is like the go-to for DJs and stuff when it literally has the crappiest audio integration of any operating system yeah. that's ever existed in my lifetime. Like it's pretty bad. DOS does it yeah. better. Okay, mm-hmm. DOS mm-hmm. does it better. <laughs> that is that is some. Uh, painful you can work around it easier in dos than you can with apple apple's like oh just buy all this other software to make virtual versions of your audio so that you can actually record channel like it's such crap such garbage (laughs) so bad we wouldn't say that apple if if you sponsored (laughs) us oh that's Uh, funny we'd still say it because we we probably still would yeah did this video wet your open source appetite then you'll love watching the full episode. We covered even more Linux goodness and so much more. You don't want to miss it. So go here to watch the latest episode of Destination Linux.